Hey guys, it's Charles D'Angelo. Happy Saturday. Today I want to send you this idea to consider. So many people that come to my office every week ask me, you know, Charles, you seem to have achieved a lot of different remarkable things in your life, coming from a family of obscurity, a family of modest means, one time weighing 360 pounds, and now you're fit, you're healthy, you're enthusiastic, you're energetic. I mean, I feel flattered when they give me all those compliments, but the crux of their question really is, how did I go from such a radical place of loneliness, despair, emptiness, to a place where I live at the peak, where I'm always pursuing something new, I'm always going after another goal, another objective? How did I get myself determined not having any real evidence that I could ever get there around me? Well, I think the answer to that question is simple. Everyone has evidence of success around them. If you don't have someone in your immediate field of influence, someone in that sphere of influence that you're in right now, you can go to the internet or to the library or you know, to an institution, an academic institution, and find people that have been very, very successful at the very thing that you want to achieve success at, whether it's weight loss or if it's financial success or if it's academic success or if it's some type of more theatrical success. Maybe you want to become an actor or you maybe you want to become some type of professional that no one in your family has ever pursued that career before. So you're saying to yourself, well, how could I ever get there, right? You ask yourself the wrong question. Rather, ask yourself who around me or who's someone that I even know viscerally, someone you know that I could research or study or read a biography of that went from nothing or went from where I am or worse than where I am to where I wanted to be. That's been one secret that's always really guided me in my life. I said to myself, well, if this person could do it or if that person could do it, as a kid at 360 pounds, it sounds kind of funny, but I would look at the guys that were in Abercrombie magazines, you know, the Abercrombie and Fitch models, and I'd say, wow, if they could have that type of body, what's stopping me from having that type of body? What do they do? How do they eat? What are the routines that they follow? And by really studying, embracing, and thinking about that compelling future, that promise, I was willing then to pay the price of exercise, of eating the right foods, of doing the things that would be required to have that outcome. So simply to go from where you are to where you want to be is a result of a few things. Number one, defining where you want to go. What are the results you're after? Be very vivid in your description to yourself of them too, because if it's not exciting, if it doesn't really pull you forward, you're going to have a very difficult time staying focused and staying consistent when the times are challenging. You know, in life, when you are headed towards a target, the winds of life, the storms of life, the challenges, you know, sometimes move you off course. And it's very important to have those reasons, those compelling reasons behind your results. So first, I always tell people to find the results that you're after quite clearly. Secondly, make sure that the reasons you have are compelling, that they're things that aren't going to only mean betterment for your life, but perhaps betterment for your children or for your relationships or for your financial health. I mean, when a person wants to lose a massive amount of body fat, and they come to me for my help, and now I've helped literally thousands of people to do just that, we talk about the impact that's going to have at a much deeper level. Sure, they're going to fit into a new size of clothing. Sure, they're going to be able to really have more energy. But think about the elimination of medication, not having to take hypertensive medication anymore, being able to have their doctor either reduce or eliminate diabetic prescriptions, Think about the freedom that comes with making the decisions, the small choices, day after day, week after week, month after month, that over time accumulate and add up to some remarkable, remarkable things for your life. And how much better you're going to feel. Not to mention the intimacy of the juice that is restored in relationships. You know, when you're so caught up in yourself, when you're so tied down by what's a problem for you, you're a lot less apt to be able to give to other people. So many people operate under this myth that, well, by sacrificing my own happiness, I'm doing more for my family. When in reality, by sacrificing your own health and happiness, you're taking away from your family's health. You're not able to give as much. You're not in as good of a mood all the time. You don't have the energy, the endurance, the vigor, the tenacity that you could have if you were taking care of the disciplines of eating right, doing a little bit of exercise. So by coming up with all these compelling reasons, oh my gosh, by making these changes, the carrot that's at the end of the stick is all these good things. And then you've got to ask yourself, well, what if I don't change? And come up with some really painful ideas, which are probably true. I'm going to be on medication or more medication if I don't change. I'm going to have a situation that's going to make it necessary 
that either I change or I get sick or even at worst, you know, if you're more of an overweight, that you're homebound. I have people that come see me all the time that literally are 400, 500 pounds that right now can barely walk as it is. And if another 20, 30, 40 pounds is accrued, their joints just can't take the stress. So ask yourself, what are the results I want? What are the reasons behind them? And then thirdly, you need to create a roadmap to go toward the thing that you're pursuing. You need to have a compelling future designed. You don't go out and start to design the inside of your living room without having an idea of where the furniture is going to go. I mean, you don't start building something without having a blueprint. So having the results blueprinted out, having the reasons that you're really certain that it's a must for you, that's not something you ought to do, but something you're absolutely certain you're going to follow through with, and then having a roadmap you're going to follow to get there are the three things that will drive you into your future and make it one that's rewarding, compelling, prosperous, happy, having all the things that you want. I think that many people get caught never taking action. They are the, there's so many that want so much, but so few that are willing to really pay the price of discipline doing the things that are required to get to where they want to go. And I think it's because they lack the vision of their own future. They don't really see what's possible, and even if they have an idea, they still think, well, you know, that might be good for him or good for her, but there's no way I could ever get there. And the truth is, if you can find someone in this world that's achieved the very thing that you're after, then you too can achieve that thing if you're willing to do the things that person was willing to do. Why is it so many people in our country are millionaires? I mean, what other country has so many people that have acquired and accumulated so much wealth? Other countries don't afford their citizens the opportunities to be able to climb the ladder of success as high as the person wants to go. There's limits. Right now over in Europe you hear about the different countries that are actually putting limits on the amount of time a person can work. In America, how long can you work? How much money can you make? How healthy can you become? As healthy, as wealthy, as successful as you want to become. As long as you're willing to do the work that's required. So today, get excited about your future. It's Saturday. Start to think about what is it I'm after? How do I want my body to look? How do I want to feel? How do I want my next year to really develop? How do I want this next week to develop? A great teacher once told me, never start your day until it's already done. And you say, well, how can I not start something until it's done? That doesn't make any sense. Well, it actually does. Don't ever go out of your home. Don't ever get out of bed without already having a plan for your day. And in the context of the work that I help people with, it's with the idea of having a strategy with how you eat and how you exercise. Have that already determined before you leave the house every day. Have a plan with when you're going to eat, what you're going to eat, how much you're going to eat, where it's going to come from, or you're going to bring it with you. Also, what time you're going to do your exercise. Have it already completed up here so that it's simply an automated process that will unfold as your day goes by. Make sure that you don't be spontaneous with your foods. Be strategic. Be strategic with the time you're going to exercise. Make it a priority for you. And I promise you, it's my guarantee, if you'll take care of the small decisions, hour after hour, day after day, week after week, the big goals that you've set for yourself, whether it's losing 100 pounds, losing 50 pounds, or if it's a discipline like acquiring a certain amount of savings, you start to work with it when you have a little bit, not when it's, the, when it's a big problem. Start now. Start today. What better time? Because the reality is we all have that little voice on our shoulder that's telling us the clock is ticking, but we distract ourselves. And it's not until someone gets sick, our doctor warns us that our health is declining with our habits as we don't think about the impact they're having on us, that we really decide whether or not we're going to take action. Don't wait for something to necessitate that you change. Be insightful. Think about your future. Think about the path you're on. Think about where you're headed. And ask yourself, do you want to be a victim of the storms of life? Or do you want to design a compelling future for yourself that's fulfilling, happy, filled with joy, have unbelievable memories, so that when you look back at your life 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now, you can say you really filled every day with everything you possibly could. Make today count, and I'll talk to you soon.